It's Freedom Files with James Byrne on Ron Paul Radio. Radio. Welcome to the show. You're listening to Freedom Files live on this Thursday evening. I am James Burns, your host, and um, riding shotgun with me this hour is my dad, Kerry Burns, the host of Canvas Corner, his website, canvascorner.com. We'll chat with him in just a moment, but first, hopefully you can hear me. So if you can hear me, be sure and uh, let me know in the chat room, ronpaulradio.com slash listen, ronpaulradio.com slash listen. Hopefully the uh, echo is just me. (laughs) <laughs> Anyways, unlike all the uh, big giant networks out there that spend, uh, well, get millions if not billions of dollars a year in advertising to fund their operations, Ron Paul Radio depends upon ge- de- generous donations from listeners like you. Every little bit helps, $5 here, $10 there. But for every $20 or more in donations, you're going to get a free Ron Paul Blimp courtesy of ronpaulblimps.com. That is ronpaulblimps.com. And uh, be sure and donate to ronpaulradio.com. Very easy to do. Just log on to ronpaulradio.com, and you will find the chip in up at the right corner right there for you to uh, have access to. And every little bit that you are able to contribute to Ron Paul Radio helps keep Ron Paul Radio on the air. Now, for the uh, rest of the first hour, we are joined by my father, who is also the host of uh, Cannabis Corner, you can check out his website, CannabisCorner.com. Carrie, how are you doing? Hello, James. Glad to be back on your show. Yeah, there's an echo. We'll have to deal with it during the break. Anyways, um, last night, of course, I wasn't on the air uh, because I've been fighting this bronchitis thing. And um, we also had a plan to uh, simulcast uh, the Ron Paul Tribune's interview with Doug Weed. And it was a pretty good thing that I wasn't here last night because, well, the power went out. Power went out. Yeah, we had a massive storm here in uh, Shreveport, Louisiana, and uh, it was pretty epic. It lasted a little over two hours, but anyways, I'm glad to be back tonight. Uh, still recovering from uh, my bout with bronchitis. It's not that I feel sick. It's just that it's very draining, and um, unfortunately, um, it, you just got to rest, and you have to relax. You have to drink plenty of fluids and soup. And while I've been resting and relaxing, I haven't been sleeping so well. So I haven't really gotten that much sleep. But anyways, the show must go on. So um, a lot of things I wanted to bring you on the show tonight to talk about, Dad. Uh, First and foremost was this article that I came across on the Drudge Report yesterday, I believe. And it's from the Atlantic Journal. And I thought it was kind of interesting, this supposed October surprise, how uh, some people believe. Now, I I don't see any real basis for this. I think it's just a, a rumor. A, yeah. a, but anyway. Good way to get one started anyway. Yeah, or else try and fool some people into voting for Obama on Election Day. Yeah. Uh, supposedly, uh, there's a scuttlebutt. And like I said, I don't, I don't buy any of it. No. But there's people out there that actually believe that he's going to legalize marijuana coming up in October. Yeah. Well, none of the people anyway that work for Obama's election team and all that, none of them have gotten behind any of the marijuana initiatives, so it's not likely. But, you know, it, it could be as simple as the president passing an executive order to make cannabis legal in this country, and it's really what should happen. And uh, I'm not talking about medical marijuana. I think that cannabis use of the cannabis plant, it does cure a lot of medical maladies that people suffer with and all, and they should be able to use it if they want to. But we're not talking about going to a doctor to get a prescription or that. We're talking about outright legalization, you know, where it's taxed uh, just like a sales tax on any other liquor or cigarettes that you buy out there. And not these states that are, you know, passing this decriminalization where the cop confiscates the weed and then you get fined $150. I think that's wrong. If they're not prepared to do that to the people who go buy a six-pack or a pack of cigarettes or a bottle of whiskey, then you shouldn't be allowed to be able to do it against the pot smokers. It's, uh, it's particularly when you look at the track history and the number of deaths that those legal substances cause, then – you should be finding those people thousands of dollars, not $150 like you want to do the pot smokers by comparison when you look at this subs- the substance comparison because cannabis has never killed anybody, and nobody's even ever overdosed on it. 
never been sent to the hospital for it. So I think they need to really take a look at this. And the only way it's going to work is to make it outright legal. It never should have been made illegal in the first place. It was done illegally. Uh, there was no constitutional uh, uh, agenda that they follow that, that's uh, written into our Constitution. It was just, you know, it came about rather illegally, and it's, and it's wrong. And it, the government does not have a right to tell an individual that they can't use this herb, possess it, grow it, or whatever. They have no right whatsoever to tell anyone that. And where they ever got the idea that they could do that, I don't know. It's just, but you got to look at the, this happened almost seven decades ago, you know, or a little over more, seven and a half decades ago. And you've got to look at the mindset of what's happened. Since, look at the, look at what people, how they used to think back then compared to now. I mean, you even mentioned, uh, you know, uh, dating blacks or, or even blacks being free or, you know, look, I mean, just think of the mindset of what was going on in that time when they made cannabis illegal. And it's just like for 75 well, years, we've just ignored it. I think you need to elaborate a little bit more about what you're talking about because yeah. there's a lot of fear propaganda back then yeah, there about was. reefer madness. Sure. Yeah. Randolph Hearst. I mean, he was the perpetrator of all of those movies and stuff like reefer madness, the panic and the, the, the assassin of youth, all of those. And the reason is because he had huge timber reserves and he knew that he couldn't compete with the hemp. Yeah, but what you were basically trying to say there a moment ago was the fact that they had demonized uh, blacks and Hispanics. Sure. Saying that because... Yeah, but it was, there was a lot of reasons for it. And the race card was definitely played then because they said, oh, well, if the, uh, if the, if the white women smoke cannabis, then the blacks... Or they're going to go and sleep with the blacks. That's what they were saying. They they said that it that it made the you know that just this drove these white women crazy to go have sex with black men. I mean, they were literally putting out ads like that. I mean, that's just insane. I mean, it's just that kind of stupidity. I mean, and they, there's there's tons of them. I mean, you can watch them on YouTube. They're they're just, they're so ridiculous. I can't even believe anybody even back then with the mindset of people that they would even believe such stuff. But but particularly today. I mean, this is 2012. Well, there are some instances where we have come a long ways. Like nowadays, people are a lot more open about, you know, people having different relations. Yeah. It, that doesn't really matter as much anymore nowadays. No. But the, the, the issue is there are things that have gotten worse right. at the same time. And, That's and right. The fact that, you know, our liberties have been um, curtailed a lot. Well, we're, I just don't ever get where anybody out there would ever say that the government has absolute reign over your personal life, your, what you choose for yourself. It's like the type of foods you want to choose to eat, the type of clothes you want to wear, what kind of car you want to drive within your means or, or most people without even being within their means. But, but they don't have a right to regulate personal life on any level. We've never, it's never been right for a government to regulate social behavior ever. They didn't learn a thing from prohibition. And it's like, you know, okay, they had to give up that one on the alcohol and all. So you had all these federal agents that had nothing to do. Oh, hey, let's go after cannabis and make hemp illegal and ruin the country. You know, I mean, it's just, it, it's insane. And, and for what it could do, what the hemp industry could do today for promoting jobs, we could generate all the fuel in America that we put in, in every engine that runs in this country, plane, train, plane, car, you name it. We could make fuel for all of it. And we could grow it on a very small amount of land. It would not take a lot of land to do it. Less than what we grow food crops on. Absolutely. Kerry Burns is my guest. His website, thecannabiscorner.us, rcannabiscorner.com. And uh, we're about to go to a break, and we'll discuss more of these issues and uh, go into um, how uh, I, I think this is a bit of fantasy, the uh, whole October surprise that they're talking about regarding uh, that Atlantic Journal article. But we'll talk about that. We'll talk about more uh, the hemp industry, uh, the entire uh, drug prohibition, war on drugs, you name it. We're talking about this hour with Kerry Burns, my dad, and the host of Cannabis Corner, a very, very popular YouTube web show. And you can check out his website once again, CannabisCorner.com. Our website, of course, freedomfiles.us. You're listening to the Freedom Files radio show live on this Thursday evening. It is Flag Day 2012 right here at ronpaulradio.com. Coming at you live four nights a week, Monday through Thursday, 9 to 11 Central, 10 to midnight Eastern. It's the Freedom Files radio show live on this June 14th, 2012. I am James Burns, your host, and the music of Freedom Files, courtesy from my friends over at the American Tragedy, an awesome independent rock band. And uh, thank you so much to Adam, Jackie, Trey, and Ryan for allowing me the opportunity to use your music on the Freedom Files radio show. And you can find out more about the American Tragedy on Facebook. That's right, Facebook, the one and only. 
Just log on to Facebook and type in The American Tragedy. Going back to my guest and my father, Kerry Burns, host of the Cannabis Corner, his website, CannabisCorner.com. What we were talking about in the first break was this um, article that came out in the Atlantic Journal, basically claiming that uh, Obama has a trick up his sleeve, uh, October surprise, Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, how he's going to supposedly, allegedly, make marijuana legal. But from what he's been doing with his uh, DEA goons, yeah. that I just can't buy it. Yeah, and, and certainly, you know, and, and this is a problem, part, part of the problem with the – Medical, the whole medical marijuana thing and all. The fact that the DEA says when Obama went in there, it said it's going to leave the people alone in California that had the dispensaries and the other states that had passed medical marijuana. And then what do they do? They turn around and raid them and shut them down and cost them all this money. I mean, they're already so hammered by all these reg financial regulations already just to operate out there. And the growers, I mean, all the regulations they got to go through and all that. I mean, it's just absolutely ridiculous. I mean, I mean, you, you don't do this for anybody else that grows crops in America. You know, if you, if you did that to the tomato farmers or anybody like that, they'd just tell you, well, I can't even, I can't even operate under those kind of circumstances. And, and this is what's insane about it. And not only that, you have all of these communities like that that are taxing, you know, uh, the, out in California, they were wanting to pay the tax like a windfall tax, uh, uh, you know, at the first of the year when they weren't even sure how much tax they were going to collect for the whole rest of the year, but they were going to make them put that money up front. Now, how many businesses have to do that? Where do you have to pay your income tax, you know, a year ahead of time before you even earn the money? Of course not, because you don't even know how much you're going to even earn. Yeah. And <laughs> it's just so it's just another shining example. The whole that's why the, I'm so against the medical marijuana thing is because it makes it makes it seem makes the public believe that marijuana is a narcotic and it's not. It's an herb. And yeah. they're bastardizing it along with these narcotics, which is wrong. Cannabis smokers from the beginning have been against that. They don't. It's 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 not like the the prescription oxycontins and Vicodins and all that out there that they want to. They're all the. In fact, those are on even less less of uh, controlled substance effect, uh, threats than than cannabis itself. We don't want that linked all together. We want it absolutely legal, like it should be. It's a plant. It's a commodity. It's a textile. It's one that could aid the farmers. It could it could generate an industry. And also, I, I do want to make a point while we're talking about this hemp industry and all. They're trying to, you know, they're talking about there's a distinction between the hemp plant that grows. Well, let, let, let's let's go into the hemp part in the second half. Okay. Yeah, we'll, well do that. Yeah. Let's, let's yeah. continue our, our discussion right. regarding the war on drugs right. itself. Because we do have a uh, someone made a comment in the uh, chat room, yeah, and you can join the online conversation and you can uh, post your questions to us that way. Because yeah. we're having an issue with the phone server; it was causing echo. So uh, post your comments and questions in the chat room. RonPaulRadio.com/listen. RonPaulRadio.com/listen. Uh, this one coming from uh, Buchanan Brigade. He says uh, it won't happen. Illegal drugs make the federal government way too much money to ever legalize it. Well, that's the joke of it all. See, everybody's – that's the point I was just about to make about the the, the medical the marijuana. I mean, all of these uh, states and counties and stuff, they're, 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 they're visioning all these tax dollars and what they're going to do with it and all that. But they're operating at a cartel price. This is an illegal market out there. And once you make a substance legal, that goes out the window. Cannabis will be selling for less than a dollar a pound, just like tobacco – Tobacco sells for about $1.50 a yeah. pound right now wholesale on the wholesale market. That's where cannabis will be. It, should, it won't be any higher because anybody, you can grow, like I, like I had said before, if every man, child, woman, and child, all 350 million people in the, in the United States smoked an ounce of marijuana each a day, you could grow that amount on a very small amount of land. That's not very much money. And when you look at it, what it's going to be worth, it's even way less money. Where the money is at is generating fuel and the products from the hemp industry. This is a trillion and a half dollar industry that we're just letting other countries take hold of and we're just standing back oh we can't do that because our children to get a hold of 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 pot you yeah, know well and, i think i think what um uh, buchanan brigade the point he was making yeah. was the fact that because we, we spend so much of our tax dollars sure on the dea oh yeah hundreds of billions yeah hundreds yeah. of the, the justice department i mean if you look at what it costs just to keep the pot smokers in jail that they have in prison right now 
I mean, it's an, it's an astronomical amount. That doesn't even include the DEA budget. doesn't include the Homeland Security budget down along the border, and that's what most of them are doing. They're, they're, radica- they're looking for marijuana. That's basically what their job is, is to catch people bringing bales of marijuana across. And it's just stupid. And the whole idea that when you have something illegal, you look south of the border, what do you get? You get dr- violent drug gangs that murder people just like they're flies on the, that landed on their soup or something. Yeah. It just and, and here's the irony. You go across the ocean to Afghanistan, our soldiers are risking their lives guarding the poppy fields and the marijuana fields. Well, sure. They don't want nobody to steal it. <laughs> I, I just don't get that. On, on one side of the world, we have our soldiers out there you know, being killed left and right, yeah. being forced to be in that country, sure. that hellhole. I wonder and, if that's what it's all about is to protect the poppy and, and Well, and I, think, I think that's Nashville. part of it. I think that it's yeah. that and the raw materials and yeah. the strategic location of Afghanistan. Mm-hmm. But anyways, it's just... It shows you the hypocrisy. Yeah, it is. On one hand, they'll do everything they can to protect the product, yeah. but whenever it gets in the country, they're going to do everything they can to round up and arrest as many people caught po- possession it. Well, even the whole thing, like when they had the Singles Narcotics Treaty in 61, I mean, even back then, you know, you're looking at five decades ago, even the mindset of what people were thinking back then about society and this and that, it's so different today. And the fact that we, and, and even when we engaged in this Singles Narcotics Treaty, which was the precursor for our own Controlled Substance Act here, the reason the United States came up with a Controlled Substance Act is because they were bound to this Singles Narcotics Treaty to do that. Mm-hmm. And that was part of it. When you when after that treaty was all signed and we engaged in it, then we had to come up with our own set of, you know, this how to control people in their, in their personal lives. And, and it's just wrong. And the same people that made the Marijuana Tax Act in 1937 are the very same people that represented the United States at the Single Narcotics Treaty. It was Anslinger, the same group of people. And they have controlled this whole thing. And it's, 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 they've killed an industry in this country that would really – be a boon in America. Something you, do you know of another industry other than gambling and uh, and sports that are actually in a boon right now? Can you think of any industry? Even the oil and gas industry is not what in a boon. Yeah, they're making uh, better money than they used to make, but they used to get nothing for their oil and their gas and stuff. But it's not it's not a boon right now. The hemp industry would be a boon to America. Kerry Burns is my guest. His website cannabiscorner dot com. Uh, when we come back on the other side, we'll continue our discussion. Plus, we're going to go into the hemp industry as well, which was kind of like what you were alluding to yeah. a moment ago. Yeah, and I've got some points I want to make on that. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, you can join the online conversation, uh, share your thoughts and your opinions about the hemp industry, the war on drugs. Your thoughts are welcome. RonPaulRadio.com slash listen. RonPaulRadio.com slash listen. And be sure and check out my dad's website, CannabisCorner.com, as well as my website, FreedomFiles.us. You're listening to the Freedom Files radio show Live on this Thursday evening, it is June 14th, 2012, right here at Ron Paul Radio. Halfway through the first hour, you're listening to Freedom Files live on this Thursday evening. It is June 14th, 2012, Flag Day. I am James Burns, your host, joined once again by my dad, Kerry Burns, the host of Cannabis Corner, his website, CannabisCorner.com. And Paul Festival is officially on August 24th through the 26th at the Florida State Fairgrounds in Tampa, Florida. And uh, tickets officially go on sale. A lot of uh, great acts are going to be uh, performing at Paul Festival. And you can find out more about it at paulfestival.org. That is paulfestival.org. And uh, going back to our discussion on uh, the war on drugs, drug prohibition, whatever you want to call it. Um, and we're also going to uh, tie in a little bit to uh, the hemp industry as well and how that can help us in uh, so many ways. So I will give the floor back to uh, my dad, Kerry Burns, host of the Cannabis Corner. Well, it's like, you know, we're talking about the illicit market right now and and all of these revenues that they're projecting, you know, is from an illicit market. And they they don't need to be projecting stuff like that because when you have when you when this does go legal and it's going to, you're not going to be able to to get these kind of prices that they're talking about. But the joke of it is. The tax, the sales tax revenue that they'll be able to make on the hemp products will be hundreds of billions of dollars as compared to an entire cannabis market out there that will be probably worth about maybe a billion dollars, you know, at the, at, at, at the outside. I mean, that's uh, because everybody that is that can grow it for themselves will be doing so. And then you, you, it'll be like a novelty thing. People will want to test different varieties and stuff. And so that's where you can have the, uh, you know, the dispensary set up that, that 
growers bring their product just like they do to any market or any store that they grow. And they, they buy it from if they want to sell it for them. If they don't, they take it to another store. And this is how it ought to be. It's not, it, we, we, we waste so much effort on this eradication. And the DEA is the one that has the superior reign. They're the ones that get to decide whether or not we get to remove it from controlled substance or not. And I think that's absolutely wrong because that's 65 to 70 percent of their job is, is regulating cannabis. And that's their 70 percent of their revenues are spent doing that. And that, that's wrong that, a, that their livelihood, that of course they're never going to turn it around. My God, I mean, they might as well be handing themselves a pink slip. You know, that would be the equivalent of it. But, Absolutely. Yeah. And that, that's, you know, one of the issues that we have in this country right now, our, our government's too large, it's out of control, and while it's encroaching on what little freedoms and liberties we have left, we also have this growing mountain of debt to contend with. Well, if you took the hundreds of billions that we spend just on cannabis alone, not the drug war, but if you figured all that in, it'd even be more, but just in cannabis alone, we spend in excess of $200 billion between eradication, control, arrest, incarceration, and all of that, and... and Okay, we'd have that $200 billion going back into the, into the coffers. But if you had the hemp industry legal, then you would have tax revenues off a trillion and a half dollar industry and all of the people that would employ. It's always a tenfold effect. So we basically, in a very short time, within five years, if, if they, and I'm talking about growing hemp and se- selling it at prices like it was back in World War II when they brought the Hemp for Victory campaign back, when they were getting 10 and 15 cents a pound for the hemp. If you just went back to those prices, Price ranges in the archaic antique equipment that they were using back then to produce it with all of our modern stuff today, the farmers still could generate 10 times more money per acre than they're making off growing wheat or anything like that. And there, this Rand Paul, you know, he's teamed up with this Democrat from Oregon. They've introduced the, basically the same hemp uh, bill that, their fa- that his father introduced, you know, a legalized industrial hemp. And they're trying to make a designation between the hemp and the cannabis. And it's not. Hemp is, the reason hemp grows the way it does is because it's planted 40 seeds per square foot. If you were growing cannabis to just produce the flowers for smoking only, you would plant the plants on nine square one plant per nine square feet. So in other words, in what you would plant one cannabis plant to just produce the flowers to smoke, you would have almost 500 seed planted of the hemp. And the reason that the hemp fibers is so strong, the reason it makes the fibers so strong is because these stalks are growing in close proximity. And so what are they doing? They're stretching towards the sun. And they get up to 40 feet tall. And and the, the fibers, they don't run around the plant. They run the longitudinal length of it. So that's why they're so strong. They're, they're, they're just, they're, that's why they're the strongest fiber in the world because they are the longest growing fiber continuous fiber growing and the reason they do that is because they're planted in close proximity you would not plant hemp like you do if you're trying to produce flowers for cannabis use just to smoke those would make would take a plant that needs about nine square feet to grow adequately and if you want to produce fuel you could probably drop that down to maybe four or five square feet per plant you know other than the seed you could take off of the uh, hemp harvest, you know, to press for the oil and all. But so this, it's, it's all determined on what you're trying to achieve on how you grow it. Hemp is no different than the marijuana plant. Now, a lot of the, the hemp strains are varieties of cannabis that are very weak in THC. The active compound is very low percentage, you know. It's not, it's, and then there are some out there that have 40%. You know, those are, the, those are the varieties you would grow to smoke is the ones that have the stronger THC variety. And then the, the ones that have very little THC, they'd be worthless to anybody trying to smoke it. Those would be the ones you use for the textile and the, and the products and stuff. So it's all in the application of how you grow it. They're not different plants. In the cannabis genus, which is in the family cannabinaceae, which is these, there's three species in there. There's cannabis sativa, which is what you'd see down in Mexico, or the regular hemp. There's cannabis indica. Now, these are the Far East varieties of cannabis, which are, they grow smaller. They're, they're actually more potent as far as the smoke. There's the ones they make the hashish out of. There's ones like in Afghanistan and stuff. And then there's one in Russia called cannabis ruderalis. And it's an, it's, it doesn't even get three feet tall. It's basically just a flower top is how it grows. And they're all, they are all psychoactive to different levels and all. But it, 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 
and, and this, this thing, this stupidity from the very beginning is that, oh, well, the reason that we need to have cannabis illegal is because it's stronger today than it's ever been. Not, there's never been a bigger lie. If cannabis, there, you have the strongest varieties out there. Anything it's crossed with, that crossing weakens it. There's, there is not this magical crossing where you take a 10% THC plant that has 10% and cross it with another one that's 15 and wow, you get one that's 50%. You just, you, the, weak, the only one that improves in any crossing of any cannabis is the weaker strain. The stronger variety remains the strongest one, but it doesn't get stronger. I don't care how you grow it, what lights you use, what sun you put it under, what soil you grow it in, the potency is de- determined strictly by the variety and when you do a crossing with two between two varieties the weaker of the varieties is the only one where the thc content inc- increases so therefore that's a lie from the beginning because these early these uh, these original strains from afghanistan place like that are 25 percent thc those have been on the face of this planet before man was here and so to say that cannabis is stronger today is the biggest lie ever. Yeah, people are finally getting some of these strains, and that's the ones that are growing. Of course, if you're going to, in today's, you know, with this illegal market and all, my God, would you get caught growing tomatoes that you wouldn't eat because they tasted so bad? Of course not. You'd grow the best varieties of tomatoes you could grow. It's, cannabis is the same way for people who want to grow it. They're going to grow the varieties that are the strong one because if they get caught with it, you know, you don't want to get caught with something that's not even going to do you any good. Why take the risk? You know, if, if in this illegal market, so people are so stupid about the whole, the whole, the whole movement and everything. It it should have never been illegal. Even the Controlled Substance Act, even in that period, the Shaver Commission, all that. They told Nixon, look, this stuff should you shouldn't even have this stuff even on the list. They totally ignored it because they knew what they were doing. They were forming the Drug Enforcement Agency, and if we don't have this illegal, we're not going to have anything for these guys to do. So, Carrie Burns is my guest. His website cannabiscorner dot com. We got a little. Uh, lesson there in uh, different qualities of THC, yeah. and um, it's so stupid. The people yeah. out there, they just they, they, it's 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 just misinformation is all right. it is. And that's what Professor Carey's here for. So you can check out his website, canvascorner.com, canvascorner.com is website. And uh, we'll be back with him in the final segment this evening. Uh, well, for the hour for the Freedom Files Radio Show. And uh, don't forget to check out our website, freedomfiles.us, while it's still in its current form because. It's about to get a massive overhaul, so that's good news there. And I will uh, discuss a little bit more about uh, marijuana, the war on drugs, and the hemp industry coming up in the final segment right here, Freedom Files at Ron Paul Radio. Welcome back to the show. You're listening to Freedom Files live on this Thursday evening. It is June 14th, 2012. James Burns, along with my dad and a host of the Canvas Corner, Kerry Burns, his website, CanvasCorner.com. Now, going into the benefits of legalizing not only marijuana but industrial hemp right how is it going to benefit not only individuals but the country as a whole well as the first i think the one of the most important things is that it's going to give the american farmer a really good chance to make a decent living which they're not able to do now because of all these corporate farms and all and, and, all and here's something real funny i don't mean to interrupt you but no. the number one cash crop in this country yeah, is cannabis yeah <laughs> and that's that's for the smokable cannabis that uh, that's like a throwing a penny into a bucket and throwing a gold bar when you talk about the amount of money the hemp industry is going to bring in the cannabis market is not going to be where the money's at they've got to get out of this mindset of this illegal dollar but anyway onto the hemp first thing that it will do is that we could generate all our own fuel here in this country. This country brings in from foreign lands right now about 60% of the oil that uses daily. This is a this is almost $800 billion a year at the current oil price today. This, this has cost the United States about $800 billion. If that money went into our economy and went, you know, into the farmers producing the hemp and the people generating the oil and selling the oil. I mean, you're talking about a tremendous amount of additional jobs that would be available that are not out there now. This industry is not out there right now. So all of these would be new jobs. They will not take away from jobs that are already in place. What jobs? Well, what few jobs there are. Exactly. <laughs> Good point, James. Exactly. But 
if if you grew hemp and we generated our fuel, just our fuel alone, and the, and the the cannabis plant, the hemp plant, produces fifty thousand different products. Anything you can make from oil, you can make from cannabis, but you can make it cheaper. It you have to cut down four acres of pine tree to get the same amount of pulp that you can grow on an acre of hemp. That's renewable every year. In some places in this country, two crops a year even in the in the in the lower valleys and stuff where the temperatures stay warmer. But Okay, the fuel, that's, that would be the big one because you're going to save nearly a trillion dollars a year just in what we throw away. This goes to our enemies, our, the, the Saudis and people like that that hate us. I mean, we're, the reason they're so rich is because we made them that way. Our, our gas-guzzling cars made them that rich and all of that. And it's not going to affect the oil and gas producers here. We need their, we need their products too. But save that. Let's don't burn it up in the air for gasoline. Let's, let's generate it through a renewable process that's easy to do and it boons the farmer. Okay, during colonial times in this country when hemp was, you know, all of our founding fathers, they all grew hemp, every piece of clothing that every soldier wore during their war, the, the, the American Revolution, excuse, the American Revolution, every ship that sailed, every rope, every sail, every, it was all made from hemp because this was a tremendous industry in this country. And guess what? You could do that again. There's a lot of products that we buy, not just hemp products from other countries, but just raw products that we buy that we can make from this hemp grown here in America. We don't do that. We just throw the money away. And, and when you do that, the jobs go with it. Why, why can't we bring this industry back? In the, in the middle of the 1800s, we had over 50,000 plantations of 2,000 acres or more growing hemp. I mean, they were producing nearly 10 billion pounds of fiber a year in the middle of the 1800s with horse-drawn, mule-drawn plows. It's funny, when you, you look back at public education and you know, American history, they always talk about the, the cotton industry. Yeah. But they never mention anything about the, the hemp The cotton industry. industry, the comparison to what the cotton industry was to the hemp industry is about like taking a, a going to the scrap yard and the amount of scrap they got there and saying that that's more metal than the combined amount of all the new cars being produced in one year in the United States. That's the difference. That would be the difference. That, it, it's insane. I mean, it's absolutely insane. And cotton, you get one, maybe two bales per acre. That's worth about maybe five, six hundred dollars. When, you know, just just an acre of hemp fiber alone would bring that to the farmer. That doesn't include the five tons. I mean, for the five thousand pounds of hemp herds that you can make paper. They were making paper in the nineteen hundreds from hemp herds that they that are they're easily extractable from the hemp plant. It doesn't have to you have to use caustic. You know, when you take it from a pine tree, you have to use this real strong caustic sodium hydroxide to extract it. With hemp you can do it with sodium bicarbonate, baking soda. And well, it's and it's by a less polluting process even. Well you're a biologist how long does it take it for a pine tree to mature? Forty years. Forty years. Forty years. You could grow forty hemp crops in that forty years that you're waiting for this, and you'd still only have a fourth of the amount of product per acre. I mean, it's it's insane. And the thing the thing about hemp, we could grow hemp on farmland that's been destroyed by over farming that has no more nutrient if you started growing hemp on these lands the leaf litter alone that falls from that from from 40 plants growing every square foot i mean think of the magnitude of in an acre you know how big that is and how many plants are that's a lot of plants and how much leaf litter that drops into the soil they 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 predict that if you grew hemp on these farmlands that are absolutely worthless now to produce food, that within five years, all of those would be richer soils than some of our best farmland that we grow on today. And that's what we ought to do. We should take all of these lands that have been destroyed, grow hemp on them, restore those, and then by the time they ruin the next set of land, which they're doing now by pesticides and, and over farming and all that, then switch, go back to those lands that we've rejuvenated, start growing food crops on them, and then do the same thing over here, start growing hemp, rotate the crops, and build the leaf litter and the organic matter back up. The, from a scientific standpoint and, and the benefits of this plant and all, we're, we are a stupid society to stand by and let all of this go by. When, when this was an industry that was well-established way back, you know, back in the early days, even it was well established, even with the most archaic equipment. But we are an ignorant society. If the main reason that we're not doing this is because we're worried about our children getting a hold of pot, I mean, that is it, of all the things out there that are legal—alcohol, cigarettes that kill almost a million people a year and all. 
if I had children and they were going to experiment with stuff, I would pray that they experiment with pot and find out that that's what they should be doing. If they're going to do something. What do you I mean would, if you had children? I, if I had children that were going to experiment, I oh. said. I would, I, would, I, I, I would always say, I hope they don't drink because or smoke cigarettes because I know that will catch up with them and do really bad harm to them. I, I know for myself, I, smoked, I have smoked cannabis now for the last 45 years every day. Every day in that entire 45 years I've smoked every day, I'm a very healthy person. I know that it has not debilitated me in any way whatsoever. In fact, I really do from a, from a health standpoint, it's very beneficial. And it's like any other herb. When you use them over long periods and all, you boost your immune system, you boost your overall health. And, and th- that's the joke of it. We have people out there that are suffering really horrible illnesses for whatever reason, whether it's toxicity, what they eat, or whatever. And you have a plan plant here that could really offer benefit to them without any side effects. How many drug commercials do you watch on TV of all these magic drugs? But my God, when you hear the side <laughs> effects, hell, would you really take any of that stuff? <laughs> really? Most of the side effects uh, contradicts what the... And, and if you look at that, 50 million people smoke cannabis every day in this country, and we've never sent one of them to the emergency room for any reason ever. Yeah. Ever, not one. There's not one record of any emergency re- treatment for anybody overdosing on cannabis, or, and, and certainly nobody ever dying from an overdose on cannabis. It has never happened because it is impossible because your brain can only take in a certain amount of the the, the active ingredient, the tetrahydrocannabinol that it bonds to in the brain is very limited, and this is why it does not become addictive, and it's also why you ca- it does not cause overdose. All if right. people would understand science, they would get it. With one minute left, well, about a minute left, yeah. uh, bringing the conversation to full circle before we go, uh, before we, well, before you go, yeah. uh, if Obama did make marijuana legal in October, what would you do of your life? <laughs> well, I, I wouldn't have to do the cannabis corner no more. And that was really the ultimate goal when I started. I said, I will do this until we get it legal because that was the point. We've been trying for at least 40 years of my adult life trying to get this this thing turned around. Uh, we had, yeah, there's a great marijuana movement now, but we had a better chance back then because people were more on board with the idea then. It's just that the government, like everything else, and then when Reagan and Bush came in, of course, then cannabis became this dangerous substance, and boy, the DEA, I mean, everything just went out of control, and it's just gotten worse since, and it, we've, we've got to get away from that. It's just, it's insane. It's, well, it's I, I do believe that the tide is starting to turn. You have yeah. uh, MPP, you have normal, you have LEAP. Yeah, we have, have lots of great legalized groups. Louisiana, yeah. uh, Willie Nelson's Tea Party. Sure. The yeah. list goes on. People and on. are getting a little more open, at least, uh, about it. So. Fire off the website. Cannabiscorner.com, and I uh, hope you'll visit. We have over 100 videos out there, different information, and we discuss every angle possible. They're on the videos. You, just, you may have to watch a few to get it all, but uh, it's all out there. All factual. We don't make up anything. We do give our opinion on things, but the factual stuff we do, we're not making it up. It is all backed by fact. Be sure and check it out, CannabisCorner.com. My dad, Kerry Burns, the host of the Cannabis Corner. Dad, thank you so much for stopping by this evening. Real pleasure, James. And thank you. more news and headlines coming up the second hour right here. Freedom Files at RonPaulRadio.com. <laughs>